Our former master is daring us to venture he knows deeper time into his stronghold. With every passing moment, the jailer's power grows. The flow of anima into the moor must be stopped. Be on your guard, mortals. Denathrius has the advantage here. He will use if all his guile to force us. If we are to have any chance against Denathrius, we must deprive him of his most prized possessions. I know the path we must take to reach them. So, welcome to LFR Castle Nathria Wing 2, the R Reliquary of Opulence. So once again, we are not facing Shriekwing. I guess in Wing 3, we're just going to face both Shriekwing and Sludge Fist in the same room over there. So, In the meantime, we're going to be facing the other three bosses. Oh, Also, yeah, those things explode and they hurt. I've learned during my time with uh, the community I've done this uh, progressing normal with that uh, having blood elves for the big massive uh, racial dispel that they have is really helpful and handy here. Also, slappy hands! So, the three bosses, if you can't tell here, we're going to be doing the Sun King Salvation in this one. Then we're going to be facing Artificer Zymox, and then the Council of Blood. Also known as the Dance Boss. Who's ready to dance? So, I've had kills on Kael'thas and Zymox. I did not get a kill on Council of Blood yet, because as we discovered the first time we encountered it, it's not an easy boss. Or at least that's how it seemed the first time we were doing it, trying to figure out and learn how to do it, especially when we realized it's a council fight and there's a certain um, way it works in terms of, oh, if you... It, it's kind of like the council fight from... of the... Um, what, what was it called? Back in Ulduar. The Assembly of Iron. So it was kind of like, you know how, yeah, like hard mode or whatever, like if you defeated each of the three members of the Assembly of Iron in a certain order, it would kind of affect the fight in terms of phases. Or like how if you took down um, Mulgheim and Brundir first and saved Steelbreaker for last, that would be the hard mode version of the fight. That's kind of an... It's not the same thing, exactly, but I hope you guys get what I'm saying in terms of it's somewhat similar in that regard. In the sense that what order you kill each of the members of the council will actually change the fight in terms of mechanics. A couple of mechanics will go away, but then a couple of more mechanics will be added. Because mechanics that one boss had will go away. But then the other two bosses will then be able to have a couple more mechanics that are pretty strong. So it's an interesting fight in that regard that you kind of want to decide what order you want to take them down in order to be able to figure out which mechanics you want to deal with. Or which mechanics you want to get rid of. So this is a cool wing here because Zymox is over there. Sun King is over there, and then the council is over there, and you have to clear all the trash in this room before we can progress to either one. Now, the Zymox fight is actually pretty fun. It's pretty sim simple, and it's pretty uh, fun, but, or, and sim <laughs> it's simple, I don't know, if it's easy if you know what to do. And if you don't really kind of mess up. If you know, like, 
Okay, we do this, this. It's pretty simple, and it can be a pretty, you know, good, fun, simple fight. It, it just comes down to, like, okay, did you do the mechanics work? Yeah, we can't progress. Hold on. Have to clear all rubbish. Just let them know. Like, these doors won't open until we clear all the trash. This is one of the reasons I'm glad that Unholy is really good at AoE. And especially for this upcoming fight with Sun King, because as we discovered, having lots of AoE is really good for the fight and clearing lots and lots of trash. Appalling. Our people starve outside the castle walls, yet these loyalists indulge their avarice. As they dance and feast, the Jailer amasses an army to destroy the Shadowlands. The fools deserve their fate for believing the lies of Denathrius. Many valuable weapons adorn these halls. Let us liberate them from the grasp of these aristocrats. We all have our demons. Also, by clearing the trash in these rooms, you unlock the mirrors, which are shortcuts in this raid, to get quickly back to this room in case you're to wipe. Because when you wipe and release, you get sent back to the opening door, where there is a dredger to repair your stuff. But then we unlock mirrors that let us go back to this specific area. So it's a nice way to design, like, quickly going back to certain places um, once you've unlocked shortcuts in case you wipe over and over. Just my this mirror should prove useful for helping you move throughout the castle, mortals. Yeah, what Renathal said. Oh. There's usually trash in this room. Yeah, they're like, wait, what? Hold on. Yep, over here. So yes, in case you didn't notice, this is a obvious, obvious spoiler. Though I still argue that it's not quite a spoiler when Blizzard was being very upfront about him being in this expansion. Sun King Salvation, AKA Kael'thas Sunstrider. In the sinister confines of Castle Nathria, souls are being tortured not to redeem their sins, but to amplify them. The prideful Prince Kael'thas has been burdened with the sins of others and his pain and hatred are channeled to make him a powerful weapon. This has imperiled his soul like no other, and it must be saved, if only to keep it from being unleashed upon the Shadowlands. his most potent souls in this chamber. He fuels their darkest instincts, forging them into weapons to turn upon his enemies. Once I break these bonds, you will be the first to burn! Wrath is your most potent sin, Sunstrider. <laughs> it will serve us well. This one's pride and arrogance are legendary. Come, let us deprive Denathrius of his prize. 
So, the way to win this fight is not by killing that boss there. Renithal's traitors! Gods! They don't know that trash is part of the fight. Oh! <laughs> they reset, and I pop my cooldown. Alright, so, anyways. The way this fight works is that you don't kill a boss. You, What we're doing is we are healing Kael'thas. It's a healing boss fight. Except unlike the green dragon boss fight back in Ice Crown, what we are instead doing is actually sacrificing our life through those pedestals into Kael'thas. You'll notice right now he's at 10% health up here. To win this fight, we have to get him up to 90% health. By doing that, we each of us, or some of us, will each line up and go to these pedestals and have our health get siphoned through them into Kael'thas. Obviously, this is going to drain a lot of our health, and our healers have to kind of help keep us alive in that regard um, after we channel quite a bit of it. And then we get a debuff for a couple minutes, which means we can't just keep doing it. We then have to wait like five minutes or so before we can then be able to do it again. Or maybe it's like two minutes. Anyways. So... At a couple portions of health, he will then have a shade of himself come up, which looks like his you know, his former self, and it can do quite a bit of damage and be very tough to manage. He also summons little uh, phoenixes that will fly around and do some big AoE damage. It's a pretty rough fight if you don't have a lot of good DPS, especially AoE DPS, because we have to make sure we take care of the adds, because if we leave them alone, they will just keep coming and coming and get stronger and stronger and just eventually overwhelm us. So we have to keep um, making sure we keep the room clear of adds. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Renithal's traitors! God. That is not the time to pop lust. But then again, this is LFR. I'm sure some people have not done this fight before, so this is going to be a learning process for a lot of people. This is one of the reasons I love slapping hands for this fight. You know why? Because then I can pull all the ads in. I'm gonna go ahead and shield myself. Do not allow them to interfere. All right, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do it myself first. So I'm getting drained soul. Yeah, it keeps stacking the damage you take. Additional guards are on that. Now I had a shield up, so I didn't get to lose my health. Though I do wonder if that may be an LFR thing that maybe just doesn't do that. So you see that Vanquisher there? He will keep getting stronger and stronger if we do not kill him. Also, these assassins are like the gargoyles from Nox Ramus. They will actually start casting something that will have them go turn to stone and will get all their health back. So the moment they start casting that, we have to focus fire them. Because we cannot let them finish that cast. Because if we do, then they just get back to full health, and then we have to start over again. More of those fools seek to kill us. Do not allow them to interfere. I just noticed I don't have the debuff anymore. Did they cut down the debuff to like a minute in LFR? They did. It's only a minute in LFR. In normal, it's like two minutes. I wonder if, if it like increases the timer on Heroic and Mythic. So you'll notice Kael'thas is now at 42. Yeah, when we and he gets to 50% health, you'll see the phase I was talking about where the shade of him shows up. And it's pretty rough. <laughs> Okay, we also have to take care of those infusers because they can be able to interfere with Kael'thas and his health. Okay, here comes the shade. Hopefully our, you know, our group will get an idea of what you're supposed to do because this thing hurts a lot. Oh 
Oh gosh. Okay, so then Ember Blast, and then I have to actually get that to stack with the group. Otherwise, it's going to possibly, probably kill me if I don't stack up with the the team. It returns. So yeah, we have to be like right on. Yeah, there we go. So now the shade goes away, and then we go right back to trying to heal Kalthus. Do not allow them to interfere. Yeah, forty-five percent health and ninety percent health. More of those fools. And I think once we defeat the shade the second time, we win the fight. Yeah, this feels much easier on LFR than it did on normal. I haven't even tried this fight on Heroic yet. Mainly because I'm wanting to finish my progression on normal before I move on to Heroic. But I did get a glimpse of what some people, including Complexity Limit, were doing when trying to actually do this fight on Mythic. Yeah, it's no... Uh, it's no wonder that they were wiping to this boss multiple times on Mythic. This is, uh, this seems like it would be a very rough fight on Mythic. Alright, everybody. Don't forget, we have to keep healing Kael'thas. Alright, I just noticed we have somebody dead, but that's a DPS. If I'm going to use my combat res, I'm saving it for a tank or a healer. Another interruption from the castle guard. Dispose of them. Yeah. It's like, okay, we have some, uh... Let's get my army of the dead back out here so I can, uh... Be able to have some troops to help us out. Another interruption from the castle guard. Dispose of Chains of ice. Lockdown campaign. Additional guards are on route. Here comes the shade. Like a thousand suns! And here comes another Vanquisher. Alright, we'll just focus the shade. Sunstrider, you are free from the sire's tyranny, but you cannot escape your own deeds. Come with me, and I will help you find atonement. I am tired of being used as a pawn by others. Will your help allow me to claim vengeance? You have so much to learn. Take this soul away and aid him, accuser. This is followed up on in the uh, Venthyr campaign, by the way. So yeah, some people left, but hey, we'll get some people filled in. I'm way behind the group because I was wanting to catch the story. 
But they have a ways to go before they can reach uh, Zymox. And you have to have done both Sun King and Zymox in order to even get access to the Council of Blood fight. Because the area won't open until you do. So now we go to this other side where Draven has opened the door. And yeah, it's pretty similar trash. Some of this, on at least on normal, we've encountered has... We have felt the need to actually go ahead and um, crowd control it. Also, if you're by yourself, yeah, these assassins are more likely to just outright kill you. It's like being, you know, attacked by a rogue, you know? Just notice that my health just all of a sudden just disappeared. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and uh, have some fun here with our group and just bring them in. Be like, hey, hey, look at this, a couple more. Hey, possible BOEs. See, look what I tell you. Come on over! <laughs> the BOEs are real! Officer Zymox, another broker. Not everyone in Castle Nathria is loyal to Sire Denathrius. Some simply saw an opportunity and exploited it to their own ends. Artificer Zymox has worked with Denathrius, but is mostly concerned with getting the better end of the deal, which may require the end of Nathrius' invaders. Look at that, two more BOEs dropped. The BOE drops are real, I tell you! Oh yeah, by the way, the, there are seeds here that'll be actually be part of the fight here with Zymox. Which you might think are Night Fae. They're not. <laughs> yeah, you notice how much they are hurting our team? Yeah, that's because they put them right there and then they, they hurt. There we go. Come on, Renathal, open the door. So, not let such potent weapons fall. So, Zymox is a pretty interesting fight. There's one main mechanic we utilize throughout this. Wormholes. He will pick two players that will create wormholes that we can use to travel back and forth between on, on this little arena here uh, to deal with the mechanics of the fight. Uh, they're extremely important, and where we put those wormholes is also very important. The first phase, he will have... <laughs> The first phase, he's going to have these ghosts that will chase us and mind control us. Don't worry, it's not permanent like it is in Olduar. Uh, you just get down to a certain percent of health and you're freed. It's a little annoying to do when you use the wormholes to basically kite them around uh, to 
wear out the time they're going to be up. Uh, the next part is going to involve these seeds that will have, be big explosions that look like they are from uh, Ardenwield. And we have to Five. use the to quickly the one corner of the room and then hoping avoid to test them. These relics on live targets. Yeah, okay, what we need to do is actually put him over there. Okay, never mind, we're going to be doing this on the other side of the room. Oh, okay. So, I'm very used to this. I have a story about this. Let us see the legends of this relic. Why is it just right here? Oh, boy. Yeah, so that's the idea right there. So when we first did this, I was the only melee DPS in our group. It kept picking me for one of the wormholes every single time. It kind of became a gag amongst uh, our group that I was having to do it every single time. What we figured is that it must pick one melee and one ranged in that in that regard. So it was just funny that every single time I was having to, um, you know, make the wormhole over here. And then a range would try and deal with the other, you know, the other wormhole. Now you see, someone has gotten mind control. The war beckons. But once we got them to down to a certain point of health, then they weren't, uh... Alright, so now we're at 70%, so now... We're going to be using these wormholes to deal with the seeds. This could wipe us, or we could pull this off really well. The third phase is also kind of interesting, and as a Death Knight, I completely negate it. I'll explain when we get there. Also, those Rift Blasts hurt. I hate those Rift Blasts. They hurt. Also, that tank needs to get out of the group, because that explosion will hurt us. And we didn't do the seeds all that great. Notice how much raid-wide damage we just took. That's why we have to make sure the seeds are handled correctly. When it comes to where they are placed. It's usually a good idea to have mobile classes handle the seeds. I did this on my Demon Hunter and I was able to dash with the seed to the other side of the room. Okay, I got distracted. <laughs> I was paying attention to this, I didn't notice that I was uh, dying to a dot there, so... You cannot bargain with death! Okay, we did the seeds much better that time. But like I was saying, on my Demon Hunter, I was able to pick up the seed and dash to that portion of the room, drop it, and then use the wormhole to get back over there. But it was just a really great idea that I could be able to use my dash to move the seed to that portion of the room, so that way I could basically deal with that mechanic in a much easier way. Which is why the idea of using mobile classes like a Demon Hunter is a great idea to deal with that mechanic. So now, one new mechanic is going to happen here. He's going to drop that in the middle of the room. Now, what that's going to do is this right here. It's going to start sucking us to the middle. If we get sucked to the middle, we are dead. But that's why you put one of the wormholes nearby, so that way you can be able to get sent to the other one. Although, the way they put that there was not great. You're not really supposed to put that right in the middle. You're supposed to put that kind of a little bit outside so you can kind of get sucked in and then just put back over here near the boss. So that wasn't placed all that great, but you know, that's how you use that wormhole to counter that mechanic. You see what I mean? It's what I was saying about how the idea of that this is actually a simple boss in the sense that you use this one mechanic, the wormholes, to basically try and counter each of the other mechanics that can, of course, wipe you constantly. It's a really cool, you know, really cool fun fight. I, I, I do like this fight with the utilization of the wormholes. And it's just funny if you're constantly getting picked to place the wormholes, you know. <laughs> you know, if you 
you know, I'm sure there are some people that care about their DPS and such, they hate it because they, you know, by focusing on doing these mechanics, you're of course not able to really focus that much on your DPS and such, but, you know, I've, you know, I've all, as I told my buddies the other night when they were joking about me constantly having to do the, the worm rolls, I was like, look, I don't mind if, as long as I'm doing the mechanics right, because to me, doing the mechanics correctly matters more than how much DPS I'm doing, unless it's an actual, like, DPS fight. Like, there are some fights in this, you know, game, and in, even in this raid, that are DP, that, where, where your DPS does matter. Just wait till we get to Sludge Fist, and you'll see what I mean. But this is not one of those fights, because as one, as, from what I can tell, because we actually had a fight that go really long with Zymox here, I don't think he has an Enrage Timer. At all. So, this fight can go as long as it can without him having a Enrage Timer. Marvelous! Because it just it went on forever, and he never had an, you know, had his enrage go off. So we must have figured this must be the kind of boss that just does not have an enragement uh, time. So, all right. So he's near ten percent, and yet uh, uh, like half the raid is dead. So this is going to take a while. This is what I'm talking about. If you don't do the mechanics right, you're you know, a good chunk of the raid is probably going to be dead by this point. One of the tanks is up. You know, I remember, you know, the other tank died. And then I was the other tank, and I had to basically solo tank this fight for a little while. But you see what I mean? Like, when you get to this point, it gets kind of slow with the DPS. He starts to die slowly. Destruction is guaranteed. So either we're just going to eventually kill him, or... <laughs> you know, we're gonna wipe here in just a bit if people don't do the mechanics right. Together. Though I think we're gonna finish him off here. Yeah, really shouldn't place that right in the middle. Unless, okay. Okay, so they're getting a better idea here because they placed the other one right next to the boss. So that's kind of the idea, but that's only really gonna help if everyone is like on that side of the room, because if they're on the other side, they really can't use that wormhole, right? But what, what I was gonna say is that Death Knights can completely counter this mechanic here with Death's Advance. This makes it where I am immune to that sucking in, so. Uh, he's like only at 200% health. Action is guaranteed. Two, or not, not 200%, 200,000 health. Are they gonna finish him off? Because we only have... To die! Oh my gosh! You got in over your head. <laughs> so that is a change I made to my uh, DBM settings, where when we wipe, one Somdi laughs at us. I just thought it was really funny. Oh, we don't have our little dredger buddy here. Oh, I guess maybe they thought there's no way we could have wiped to this. <laughs> okay, dude, seriously? You're gonna make those kinds of jokes? If he escalates that kind of joke, I'm gonna report him. Like if he starts making racist jokes or something. Like, that's the kind of joke someone says that and nobody laughs. And it's like, was that supposed to be funny? I think you're the only one who thought that was funny. All right. Like, all right, let's go ahead and rebuff, eat, whatever. Do what you gotta do. <clears throat> go ahead and eat myself. We don't have a lock.
Like, dude, there is no lock in the group. Why are you asking for for lock cookies if there is no lock in the group? Wait, no, don't pull without our other guy here. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Yeah, hold on. Just wait for them. Yeah, not everyone's in here. Is our priest going to do the pull thing on our hunter here? I thought the priest was going to do the... Zoom, get over here! Alright, let's go. Wonderful! I have been hoping to test these medics on live targets. Stay with the lines. No, that's not where you're supposed to put your wormhole. The legends of this relic are true. Destruction is guaranteed. Well, there's going to be a lot of mind controls here, I think, because the other person didn't do the wormhole right. Yep, I'm mind controlled now. Together. Uh. Your but hey, at least it's not permanent, right? Alright. Now to do the seed mechanic. Now, from what we have seen, the seeds will usually spawn in, like, the same spots. Uh, watch my feet for those beams. Alright, the seeds. Alright, they got put over there. Good, good, good. Oh, the radius... Yeah, that's definitely smaller <coughs> on LFR. On normal, the radius is big. Die together. Move to Destruction is guaranteed. Nine Nine your lines. Okay. Well, that's a good thing I had my anti-magic shell up because I was there right as the as the tank had the big AOE explosion happen on him. If I didn't have my shell up, I probably would have taken a lot of damage or even died because of how close I was. Destruction is guaranteed. I hope this wondrous item is as lethal as it goes. All right, time for the final phase. Now I'll get to show you guys that mechanic for real. In terms of how I can be able to counter it by just being a death knight. But of course no one's dead at this point, so now we're killing him a lot faster. Death's advance. I ain't moving. Why are you bringing him over there? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm gonna res. Oh. Destruction is guaranteed. A war Alright, so I didn't realize one of our tanks died. Fortunately, somebody else res our tank. Yeah, don't put the portal near it. Put it at an angle where we can be able to use it to 
you know, quickly get back. But also, we need to be fighting because if we get dragged in, we get put back over there near the boss. But also, notice my death advance is already off cooldown. This is what my buddy and I uh, discovered the other night. We both are death knights. We were like, we can both just completely negate this mechanic the entire time. Every time he uses it, we can counter it with death advance. It's great. You know, if you're a death knight. If you're not a death knight, well, you gotta, you know, do something else. Your All right, 3%. Yeah, this is a dead boss. You cannot find this exchange has no further value. Consider our business concluded for now. So he leaves. Truly one of the most malignant mortals. By the way, this guy can drop a bag. Like a 32 slot bag. So yeah, we may see Zymox again later on. Who knows? But he just peaced out. He's like, you know what? I'm out. Alright. So now, it's time for the dance boss. The Council of Blood. The Council of Blood presides over courtly functions in Revendreth. Castell Castellan Nicholas is a strict military commander with an indomitable will and impenetrable armor. Lord St Stavros, a foppish dandy, leads the court in dance, but is also deadly with his blades. Baroness Frida wields powerful anima magics and commands the dredger Waitstaff, along with the respect of the entire court. So like I said, we didn't, I haven't actually gotten a kill on this boss on normal. <laughs> All right. Come, mortals. It is time to rid Revendreth of a haughty band of nobles that stand between us and Denathrius. A haughty band of aristocrats, you mean, right, Re Renathal? Maybe be nobles, but let's be honest, they are haughty aristocrats. Yes. The antechamber lies this way. So yeah, he's like, hey, guess what? I'm going to unlock another shortcut mirror for you right over here. You have done well so far. Thank you Striking a blow to the efforts of Denathrius. The ball would not be as But do not underestimate his power. Think nothing of it, darling. His might is... As long as the wine flows, considerable. you will have my attention. But yeah, look, they're all dancing above us. I do not share your love no, don't for be these such a bore. frivolities. If you behave, I prefer my perhaps I will let you skewer a few of the wait staff. Not sure what we're waiting on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure why <laughs> they're doing a bull timer. This is not like the other, you know, this is not like Sun King where the trash was literally part of the boss fight. At least not yet. Are we just pulling everything in the room? The dredgers got huge! 
<laughs> Look at this! Woo! We're pulling everything! I believe it's this mirror? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just following us to the mirror. Oh, that's funny. They're going through the mirror. <laughs> Look at this. This thing followed us into this room. Oh my gosh. They're all running through here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Everyone needs to die. They just keep summoning these giant dredgers. <laughs> this is hysterical. Yeah, we all need to die first. Everyone stay dead. And then they'll all reset. Okay, okay. I think we're all fine. <laughs> oh, that was funny. All right. Clearly, pulling the entire room is a bad idea. Alright, I am going to... Pull this Hawkeye... Like, just over to us. Be like, yo! Let's get this one guy, because he's by himself. Look, we're struggling on this one guy, this Hawkeye. Whew. Wow, those big AoEs are... A sight to behold and kind of painful. It's a shame the Dredger is not out there. But yeah, this is where it's like, okay, let's pull this one guy in the room. I cannot wait to see how we're going to do on this boss. Oh boy. Okay, so that guy got pulled, so we're going to have to take care of that. Did I mention that this raid is pretty rough when it comes to healing, in my opinion, based on what I've been seeing? This is one of the reasons why right now I'm like, oh, thank goodness I'm not playing a healing class. This may change when I get to my druid and paladin. And who knows, maybe it'll change when I eventually get back to my shaman at some point. Especially since right now, Resto Shamans are pretty good. So yeah, there are the three bosses over there. This fight won't start until we actually, you know, interact or pull the three of them. 
Get over here. Just want to consult with the group about what order we want to kill these three. <laughs> okay, no one's taking my question seriously. Never mind. No one knows what I'm talking about. Either that or they just don't care. By the way, there's a... Okay. Hold on. Okay, SFN. Okay, Stavros, Frida, Nicholas. Okay. Okay, yeah, this guy was the only one who suggested an order. Yeah, so... Yeah. So in this first phase, they're going to ha each have a couple of mechanics we have to deal with. Stavros has one that is uh, pretty nasty called Dark Recital. Uh, it was pretty nasty to deal with. Um, evasive lunge was a tank one because he does a big charge, but it was pretty, it seemed pretty easy to dodge. Drain essence was nasty because it's basically draining you, and so your healers have to kind of deal with that. Uh, also, I think Frida is the one who has us dance, but we'll see. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Five. Five. Four, Four, three, three two, two, one. one. Charge! Splendid! A battle to win! Yeah, I'm going after Stavros first, just because uh, I hated the mechanic that he had in the first phase here. <laughs> Yeah, that right there. Everyone, find your partner or die. Yeah. In normal, when you couldn't be able to actually, you know, get to your partner, it did a lot of damage. Dear guests and vile special Oh, time to dance. Take your places. Oh, my spotlight's all the way over there. Run forward! Shimmy right! Shimmy right! Shimmy right! Enough! You're done. That's the dance mechanic! Me. I'm sorry, I love that. That's I think that's wonderful. Well, I guess we're killing Frida first. One. Oh, 
threshold fall. <laughs> Oh, by the way, there is a dot that keeps stacking on us throughout the fight until we actually kill a boss. Me. Uh. Are we just... Okay, I guess people are just fighting... They're kind of ignoring Stavros. Okay, whatever. Alright, so now we have more ads showing up. We gotta make sure we take those out. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I hate Stavros. That mechanic right there. Ugh, that was so painful to deal with on normal, and it, and it yeah. Like I said, we we called the, the raid, you know, before we got a kill on this. Now, since then, my guild was able to get a, uh, not only a kill with this, but clear the rest of the raid. Um, and, you know, I wasn't there because I had work, you know, but hey, I'm glad they were able to do that. Um, and I'm hoping to get a, you know, kills with them later on when we, they start trying to re-clear them and re-gear and such, so... But yeah, I just remember dealing with that mechanic and we were like, okay, let's try and get rid of that mechanic because it kept causing us issues and we wanted to just kind of get rid of Stavros. But it seems like this group is like, yeah, let's just focus on Nicholas. All right, so there's the spotlight that I would be standing in if I wasn't already dead. Boogie down! Props <laughs> forward! Sashay left! Prompt forward! Stop! <laughs> I love the phrases they use to tell you where to go, like, Boogie down! I'm like, really? <laughs> like, I remember hearing about this boss when people were testing it in the, like, the beta, and, like, the word was spreading about, like, hey, there's a dance boss! And it was just kind of a hilarious little bit where we were just, you know, people were having a big laugh about it, um, about how this boss was going to be and how it was already getting called the dance boss. I mean, just look at this. We then have another mechanic where the people who are dancing above us then come back, come down to the floor and we have to avoid them while they are dancing around us. It just, this is just, this is just great. I just find... This is this kind. This is the kind of boss that puts a smile on my face, and I can't help it. It's just so like it may be a tough boss, but you know, in terms of you know the mechanics, such. By the way, this is still just phase two. Once we once they if they kill Nicholas, Stavros will have I think an, like one or two more mechanics. Like infused with anima is the second one, which is Waltz of Blood. Empowered with Anima is the third one, where he will have um, Waltzing Venthyr to the dance floor, which does violent uproar, which is deadly. So, yeah. And that's for each boss. Like, each one will have a different, like, infused with Anima or empowered with Anima type of mechanic. So, this is why the idea of selecting which order... Yeah. So... Again, dancing is not the issue. The dance mechanic thing is easy because you just do your direction buttons here. It's so easy.
But when he does that, everyone, find your partner. It does... Let me point out why this is a annoying mechanic to deal with. He assigns players to dance in pairs for six seconds. While farther than eight yards away from your partner, he punishes you, inflicting almost 800 shadow damage every half a second. In addition, he encourages your dance moves by marking each partner's location for every half second, causing it to erupt, inflicting 7,000 shadow damage to all players within two yards of the impact. That's why in our group we were struggling and having people dying because of that one mechanic. But apparently his other... the other mechanics for the other two bosses are worse. All right. All right, fine. We'll kill Frida Five, first. Four, yeah. four three, three, two, two one. one. You were not on the guest list! That is why I hate that mechanic and why I say let's kill Stavros first. Simmy right. Boogie down. Sashay left. Simmy right. Enough. Your gyration sicken me. I also love how they criticize our dancing. They're like, "Oh, your gyration sicken me!" Like they just like constantly like mock mock us when it comes to our dancing. They're like, "Oh, you are terrible at this!" Like it's just so humorous. Like I imagine they just had a lot of fun designing this with like these bosses just being s these obnoxious, arrogant aristocrats. Just it's it's just so funny. By the way, you gotta kill that attendant because it shields the boss. Four, three, two, one. So yeah, notice when Frida dies, they both take anima from her and they go back to full health. Dredger servant. That's why you can't really do that whole, you know, bring them down evenly and try and kill them at the same time, because they'll just go back to full health. I want to see what the other abilities are. So, if we leave Frida alive to the second phase, she gets Prideful Eruption. She violently unleashes the welled up pride within each player, causing them to erupt to deal 6,000 damage to all players within 6 yards. Her third one is Soul Spikes. She summons forth four spikes that impale her current target over four and a half seconds. Each spike inflicts 10,000 physical damage and increases the damage taken from Soul Spikes in addition. Each radiates. Uh huh. Okay. What about Nicholas? Prompt forward! Alright. Several begrudging waiters to begin harassing players. Begrudging waiters, they throw food. Charging and me. empowered Castellan's Cadre, fourth veteran stone guard to his aid. 
slashes its current target, inflicting 4,000 physical damage, bleaching some of the target's essence, permanently increasing their damage down by 50%. Effect stacks. Hmm. Charging. Well, I guess we'll get to see how uh, Stavros does with his uh, third ability, which is Deadly Violent Uproar. Three, two, one, four, three, two, one, time of strategy. Four, three, two, one. Everyone, find your partners or die. Charging. Yeah, that's just a mechanic that I guess I'm struggling with and I need to work on. Kill Our final song has begun. Everyone, dance until you. you die. Look, he brings everyone down here. Everyone, find your Dancing partner. Fools, Violent Uproar. Or die. Charging you. And the raid is wiped. Charging Everyone find your partners or die. Charging Everyone take your position. Special coming. It's time for the dance. Macabre. Shimmy right. Like transform. I guess that was something you were supposed to attack. Such a left. I guess they just didn't know. Shimmy right. Mm, your steps were simply delicious. Pity you <laughs> have to die now. Watch your step. Okay, so the only ones that are left alive are our demon hire tank and two rogues. Are they really gonna try and finish this off with him at 50% health? Just wipe it. Everyone, find your partners or die. Charge you. Let me guess. You got in over your head. <laughs> The fact that the dredger is not here to repair our stuff is a problem. Okay. Let's give this another try, shall we? Ugh. It's interesting that apparently... What a couple of people in this group said is that uh, that is considered the actual uh, recommended... Hold on a second. Hold on. I need to check this.
I'm very curious if this is actually like a, someone streaming this right now. Doesn't seem that way. Never mind, it's not a Twitch name. Because I just realized what it's saying. Twitchy witch. A witch a witch is twitchy. Get it? Anyways. Okay. Just quickly kill the ad and move to it, so we miss an ad. Well, yeah, I saw it, but apparently they didn't because they were tunnel visioned. So now they're debating who's easier to kill during the final phase. This guy is saying he's done this on Mythic and it's easier to kill Frida last instead of Savos. I just want to kill Stavos just because I don't want to deal with that recital mechanic. Because that keeps killing me. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. How dare you invade my party in such a dreadful Okay, time to dance. The dance. Macabre. Boogie down. Dance forward. Boogie down. Dance forward. You see what I mean? It's very easy. Delicious. Pity you have to Your steps were simply delicious. Pity you have to die now. Three, two, one. I just love the, the dialogue and such throughout this fight. It's great. I love it. We cannot ignore the ads. My gosh, my spotlight's all the way over there. Down. 
me right! Dance forward! Stop this nonsense! You have disgraced this gathering long enough! Spread. <laughs> We haven't encountered her last one here. Okay, that doesn't seem that bad, actually. Special coming. Take your places for the dance macabre. Time to dance. Yes, the dance macabre. Say left. <laughs> Simmy right. Fancy footwork. Your gyration sickened me. Two, one. Excuse me, I thought I danced pretty well there. Thank you very much. This feels much easier. Also, notice when you do the dancing right, you get a haste buff. It's pretty great. Oh, watch them scatter. It sickens me how far some of my people have fallen. So yeah, um, Four, like I said, three, two. I am in favor of getting rid of Stavros first, so we don't have to deal with that recital mechanic. And her last one did not seem that bad. Now, maybe that's just on LFR, maybe it's just toned down, maybe it's much worse um, on higher difficulties, but it just seemed much easier. I don't know why the recommended order is Stavros last, considering he brings down the people, and he also has that big, you know, this giant uproar here. Now, that was the fault of the others who didn't see that ad and didn't kill it, but still, just... Yeah. I personally would just get rid of Stavros first, because I hate the dark recital mechanic. I want to get rid of it. And then it just seemed like it was easy the rest of the way. Um, her soul spikes mechanic there didn't seem to be that bad it really didn't like it got cast and i was expecting something crazy and it was just like nope <laughs> didn't really seem that bad at all um i have yet to see um his final one which i guess is just him calling it a very strong stone guard ad uh which has sin touch blade which slashes the current target inflicting fourteen thousand. Uh, damage and leeching some of the target's essence, permanently increasing it their damage done by 50%. So it just keeps stacking its damage. And so we have to keep dealing with that while also dealing with uh, Nicholas. So, yeah. Um, that doesn't sound pleasant to deal with. So it just seems like Frida's mechanic is the least 
difficult to deal with soul spikes here because it is a tank alert but it's also a healing alert and yeah for four and a half seconds ten thousand um damage per spike but it really didn't seem that bad and now again yes this is on lfr i know but still it just seemed like once we got rid of Stavros and we didn't have to worry about that dark recital mechanic, it just seemed much easier. Plus, dealing with the ads was not that, you know, much of an issue. By the way, just to reiterate, the Dance Macabre, if you do it right, if you do the fancy footwork, which is getting each step right, you get a haste buff for 30 seconds. So if you do all four steps right, you get 12% haste for 30 seconds. Which, as you guys saw, is really easy to do once you just get to your spotlight. That's one of the only issues, is getting to your spotlight. Now, you don't instantly die there, at least it didn't, you know, but when you're not do there, not doing the moves right, that's when you start to take damage and you could die and wipe. And you see wrong moves. Failure to perform the correct dance step inflicts 500 damage per every second and removes any fancy footwork. The damage continues to increase until you find your proper location or the dance macabre ends or you die. Um, so yeah. I'm sorry, I just find the Dance Macabre mechanic just wonderful. It puts a smile on my face. And I just love the like the little calls out from each boss to tell you where to dance. And it's just, it's so fun. I imagine Blizz just wanted to have fun with this fight and this mechanic. And I can understand why. It's it, it, I just, I can't help but love this boss just for that aspect of it. Even though a couple mechanics are pretty tough and frustrating to deal with. But yeah, um... <laughs> Um, this also was, a, what I understand, a pretty rough boss to deal with on Mythic. Uh, there were a lot of wipes for the world first when they were trying to go through this boss. This, For a number of people, this was a wall um, for a while in order to get to Sludge Fist. So, so that's the first six bosses uh, other than Shriek Wing. I guess for LFR they decided we'll have a separate wing where it's Shriek Wing first and then Sludge Fist will show up because we fight them both in the same room. So, when the next wing of LFR comes out, I'm guessing it's going to be Shriek Wing and Sludge Fist, and then the final wing will be the Generals and Sire Denathrius. So, that was uh, Sun King, where we saved Kael'thas. If you want to see the follow-up to that, head on over to my um, playthrough where I'm doing the Venthyr Covenant as a Demon Hunter. You'll be able to see the follow-up to that, where it assumes that you have beaten this raid and have saved Kael'thas and all that. Um, I don't care if that wasn't top there because, well, you guys saw there was a number of different issues in that regard, so. But yeah, um, I like that boss fight just from a design standpoint, even though a couple of mechanics are frustrating, but I also like the fact that you can choose what order to do them in to try and figure out which order you want to do it instead of. I was, I was, I found it odd people wanted to do Savros last because I found his mechanics to be more frustrating to deal with. But whatever, you know? So that was Wing 2 for Castle Now through LFR. And I will continue this at some point later on. Stay tuned. <laughs>